Welcome back. In this video, I'm building directly on uh, my previous two videos on the fixed quota harvest system and the fixed, and, and then just the general uh, video we did introducing how you add the concept of harvesting to population models, focusing specifically on the logistic growth model, but noting that the, the concept is not limited to the logistic growth system. Uh, that we could add harvest to any population model by just subtracting off the harvested uh, portion of the population. So here we're going to uh, add a, an alternative harvest model uh, called the fixed effort harvest. And the idea of the fixed effort harvest is that we're going to allow the same level of harvesting effort each time period. And you know, thinking about effort this way that you know perhaps an economist might define it. Uh, you know, ultimately, we'll be thinking about it, and in this we'll simplify it in this version. Um, but ultimately, you're thinking about that in terms of you know, uh, you know, uh, human effort put into uh, the harvest in some way, measured in some way. And so, examples of limiting effort could be things like limiting the number of licenses, uh, and that could be in a you know. A, hunt of a, a population or a, a fishing licenses for either recreational or commercial fishermen um, that, that limits the number of individuals that can participate in the, in the harvest. We can put restrictions on the type of gear that kind of controls the efficiency of that effort. And so, you know, you could argue that if you just limit the number of licenses that uh, creates a strong incentive for every individual participating to be much more efficient at harvesting and could result in the same uh, amount of over harvest. Uh, so restrictions on type of gear can also uh, be ways of, of controlling that effort. And, that, and sometimes, you know, you can think about recreational bow hunting and stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of argument towards uh, that actually, for some adding value to the activity, those restrictions aren't always in imposition. Uh, obviously, in an industrial scale, there's going to be many cases where those are uh, going to be uh, be often be pushed back against those limits on efficiency. But sometimes they they uh, there are you know examples that are successful. Um, and we might limit the number of days in a hunting season or a fishing season, um, and that allow again restricts the effort. And that's a pretty common way of restricting effort. Um, even for commercial fisheries, there's often you know, specific seasons they're allowed to, to harvest. So here we've modified our logistic growth model to include this idea of fixed effort. So we have our population in the next time point is the population right now, plus the growth component determined by the growth rate and the carrying capacity. And then now we have this harvest component represented by minus E times NT. NT being the population right now, E being some measure of effort. So our harvest at time T is our effort times our population at time T. And so we're essentially defining E, our effort, as the proportion of the stock that's able to be harvested per unit time. Obviously, you would have to do a good bit of uh, research in any particular harvest system to know how to translate number of licenses or gears or number of days into what proportion of the stock can be harvested. Uh, but assuming that you can do that, that you can translate uh, uh, human effort into proportion of stock removed, this gives you a way of kind of modeling uh, how uh, harvest effort uh, affects the removal. And so you can imagine the thing that's notable about the this fixed effort is that uh, when the populations are larger, we're assuming that you're able to uh, harvest a larger total number. Uh, and when the numbers are smaller, you're able to harvest a total a smaller total number. So we're also by kind of limiting an effort and assuming that the the species that is being harvested is encountered kind of at a random rate, um, something analogous to what we talked about with SIR models that encounters between 
yeah, then there between diseases and, and people were random and now we're, you know, encounter, encounters between humans in the harvesting, the species they're harvesting are random such that uh, for a fixed amount of effort, as the population goes down, you harvest fewer individuals. Uh, also note there's a, a strong assumption in there that that's a, a linear relationship, but the general concept here is going to be robust to whether this is strictly a linear relationship or not. Um, we would just add complexity. So we're, again, always starting with the simplest possible assumption. Uh, the, the concept that we're going to see about how this affects equilibrium is going to be robust to the actual shape of this relationship. Um, but the, if you were actually going to apply this in practice, you sure as heck would want to know more about the shape of that relationship between uh, the population size and how much of it is harvested uh, for a specific level of effort. So in this formulation, this effort parameter is set by resource managers between to be between zero and one because it's again representing the proportion of the species that's harvested and you can't harvest over 100%. And you can't harvest negative percents, though I guess if you wanted to uh, model the reintroduction of a species, you could uh, model a negative effort. <laughs> but even there, that would probably be better with a negative quota. Uh, because you're introducing a certain number of individuals. Okay, so what does this look like graphically? So graphically, um, the fixed effort model implies that um, the, the, again, that as the effort increases, the total number that are removed increases. And so we have this pink line on a diagonal representing um, the, the harvest and the, slope of that line is the effort essentially because it's you know it's e e times n and they're plotting n on the x-axis so that slope determines uh, this curve and now you can see that there's an equilibrium indicated here and uh, if you are above that equilibrium so if you're starting at say carrying capacity this is going to decline to this equilibrium because the harvest is greater than the growth. If we're below that equilibrium, the growth is bigger than the harvest, so we're going to increase. And so that means that this place where the harvest in uh, growth curves intersect is a stable equilibrium, and our other equilibrium is at zero. So there's always a pair, uh, as at least two. They always alternate. So this one down here at zero is our extinction equilibrium and that's unstable, but that's the same unstable equilibrium that we had um, when we only had the growth curve when we had no harvesting. So you'll see that when we add this fixed effort harvest, this idea that we're putting restrictions on the amount of effort that causes um, harvesting to become less and less efficient as the population declines, uh, provides, uh, in many ways, greater protection against uh, over-exploitation because we don't have this lower threshold that the fixed effort, fixed quota harvest had be beyond which the population goes into a death spiral. Okay. So we see this kind of inherent advantage of this fixed effort approach, uh, but I also want to next talk about how that translates into something we haven't talked to yet about the pop in the population context, but we talked about a lot in this course leading up to the population modeling, which is uncertainty and specifically how uncertainty translates into risk. So up to now we've assumed that R and K are known constants, but in real life, the values of an R and K will be estimated with uncertainty, for example, using the bootstrapping methods that we talked about earlier in this course. So what I want to do here is kind of a thought experiment to say what happens if you overestimate R or what happens if you overestimate K? And is there any difference between the fixed quota harvest and the fixed effort harvest in terms of the risk of driving the harvested population to extinction? Um, and what I'm going to ask you to do is think about this graphically. So here are uh, examples of the fixed quota 
um, curve uh, harvest system and the fixed effort harvest system. Um, what I want you to do is to sketch these out and then draw alternative curves assessing the new equilibrium. And we're going to want a total of four curves. So two fixed quota curves, one where you have overestimated R, so the actual R is smaller. The other where you've overestimated K, the actual K is smaller. And you want to do the same thing for the fixed effort. So to draw these, you're going to end up drawing a new growth curve for both cases. And in fact, the new growth curve when you've under underestimated R will be the same for both. And then the new growth curve when you've overestimated K, the actual K is smaller, uh, will be the same for both. So what I'm going to do is ask you to pause this video right now uh, to make those four sketches. And then we're going to talk through um, what happens uh, in terms of, of how this affects risk of extinction. OK, pause. OK, so hopefully you've, you've had a chance to draw those out. So let's talk through. Uh, what happens if there's uncertainty in R and K. So let's focus first on the fixed quota system. Um, again, we have our fixed quota here. We have our original growth curve here. If we underestimated R, or so if we overestimated R, so the true R is lower than what we expected, that doesn't change K, the carrying capacity. So these two equilibria are still here. Uh, but a reduction in R re reduces the growth rate, and so it reduces the height of the growth curve. And if you go back and look at the problem where uh, the quiz qu question where we ask you to estimate um, what the maximum sustainable yield was, you'll find that uh, this this makes sense that that R uh, controls the height of this curve. Uh, R affects the height of this curve, but it doesn't affect this point K. So you could have actually gone back and calculated that. So what do we see in practice? You know, you, this is kind of drawn to an extreme point, but we can see that um, when we reduce, if we've overestimated R, so the actual R is lower, we can push this system from one where it has two equilibria that are stable to one where it has uh, only one equilibria, which is extinction. So at this this light uh, blue green curve uh, for all values of the initial conditions, uh, where population is going to decline because the growth rate is always lower than the harvest rate. And you can imagine that if I'd set this yield, this pink curve at the carrying capacity, uh, that we would have, that any degree of underestim overestimation, any case where the true R is lower than what we think, uh, would have resulted in extinction. Um, so if you set that, so if you imagine if you set the the uh, fixed quota at the maximum sustainable yield, and and there, if you assume that R has a nice normal distribution to it, you're essentially giving yourself a 50-50 chance of driving the species to extinction because there's you know there's a 50 you know if you have a normal curve on R, there's a 50% chance that you're actually higher, and there's a 50% chance that you're actually lower. So next, let's think about K, carrying capacity. So if the carrying capacity is actually lower than what we estimated, so we overestimated K, that changes this intercept here. Uh, so it changes that equilibrium point. Uh, and it also changes the height of the curve. So if you go back, again, if you go back and look at that derivation, that quiz question about deriving the maximum sustainable yield, um, it reduces, as we reduce, K, we reduce the height of the growth curve as well. So again, reducing K can push this to a point of extinction. And if we had set the, uh, the quota at the maximum sustainable yield, and there's uncertainty in K, and if that follows a nice normal distribution, there's a 50-50 chance of driving the population to extinction. Uh, and then given that there's uncertainty in R and in K, um, if we assume that those uncertainties are independent, you now you, know, you set the quota at carrying capacity, there's a 50% chance that R is uh, higher, actually lower than it, you think it is. There's a 50% chance that K is lower than you think it is. And so if you set um, 
that quota, the carrying capacity, there's now you know a 75% chance that you're driving the species to extinction if R and K are independent. Obviously, that changes if R and K are correlated, and they probably will be, uh, but it might not necessarily work in your favor. You know, it's just as likely to be that they're um, correlated in the way that your risk is actually even higher. So the point is, uh, when you set these quota, we have to take the, the uncertainty in these parameters into uh, consideration. Um, if we look at the fixed effort, um, we see that overall there's a much lower risk of extinction. So the, the curves stay the same. So here's our, cur our original curve. If R is lower than we thought it was, we've reduced this curve. Uh, here's our original curve. If, uh, if K is lower, we've reduced the carrying capacity, reduced the height of the curve. But we see that when we do this with the fixed effort curve, we change the, the equilibrium point, uh, but there still is an equilibrium point that's uh, stable and non, uh, yeah, non-zero. So we, we see that the, the, unless you really depress, uh, if you really have misestimated the parameters or you've really pushed the fixed effort level quite high so that you're right at the cusp of this curve. So if you had a very, very steep fixed effort curve such that you were, you're, goal was to keep the population very low, which doesn't seem like a very sensible thing to do anyway, because you, you know your ideal place to set this for maximizing your yield would have been up at the carrying capacity, uh, the maximum sustainable yield. Um, we see we're more resilient to those uncertainties. Uh, so if we overestimated R or overestimated K, um, our, our risk of extinction is lower, not zero, but lower. And again, in both uh, the fixed effort, uh, fixed quota, and the fixed effort, you kind of implicitly also have to assume that that there's uncertainty in the actual harvest. And unlike our statistical uncertainties in R and K, um, the uncertainties in the actual harvest are, are going to tend to be biased. They're going to tend to be instances where uh, you, you're much more likely to over-harvest than to under-harvest you're much more likely particularly to have under-reporting of your harvest than to have over-reporting. No one's going to tell you they you know, harvested fish or uh, shot deer that they didn't, uh, but they might not tell you about the fish they harvested or the deer they, they, they shot. Uh, yeah, so the, there's the uncertainty in, in the human effort side of this is going to be biased in one direction. So again, we have to build that resilience into um, these, these models and, and more sophisticated versions, you'd want to account for uh, that bias and, and try to come up with a way of estimating uh, how much that degree of underreporting is. Um, cool. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do next in the next video, I'm gonna wrap this one up right here, but in the next video, we're gonna move on to ask the question of, of what if we add not, what if we make this effort bit uh, related to a bit of economics? And so what, what if the, uh, the, there's the capacity to, to set that effort, uh, not just in terms of prescribing a fixed uh, level, but having act, actors in this system have some uh, free will about their choice of effort they put into harvesting. So we'll come back to that in the next video.